going to do a little um, introductory uh, video here on the, the Morco GV boiler and just show you what we actually look for when we are servicing a Morco GV boiler. Very important that this boiler is serviced once a year. This boiler is only here for training purposes, so don't get excited if you see things like a screw missing from it and things like that. Obviously, I have the power disconnected and I have the gas turned off and I'm a registered gas installer so don't ever go near a boiler unless you're a registered gas installer. We can see inside the boiler, this is a high efficiency boiler. It's got an um, aluminium block. It's got a fan unit up on the top and you can see this particular one here is in pretty poor condition. So it was obviously getting some uh, water coming in through the flue. Um, it's the older model which has the standard efficiency pump in it. This particular component here, this is the condense um, trap. So when the boiler is burning, it will produce water vapor and that's why it's called the condensing boiler. So when that water vapor um, turns into little droplets and it makes its way down through this little pipe and into the condensed trap. So what tends to happen with these boilers is because they're an aluminium block we get this little bit of aluminium oxide in the actual water vapor and it clogs up it tends to clog up this pipe so it's very important when we are servicing a boiler that we check this pipe we check and clean out the condensed trap because that has uh, caused lots of problems where these boilers just stop because this gets blocked up the boiler then fills with water and can cause some serious damage within the boiler Quite a common issue with these uh, boilers as well is we get flies and um, moths and spiders making their way up. They come in through the exhaust, work their way down. You can actually see some cobwebs here on this boiler. So this is uh, obviously caused by uh, insects getting in, same down here. But they, they make their way up here and they get caught. And this here is called the uh, Venturi. And this is where the, uh, the air gets sucked in and it mixes with the gas and produces them. Um, the right mixture so it can be burnt and anything that gets uh, caught in there is going to change that mixture so it potentially can be quite dangerous that you get the wrong mix of gas and air and that can lead to carbon monoxide so what we do when we're servicing the boiler is we normally take this out and we clean this as well to make sure that there's absolutely nothing in it it's supposed to be spotlessly clean to get the perfect mixture another issue we have with this uh, boiler on the older models is the ignition block and this little ignition block in here, this is the black thing here with the white uh, connector on it. This um, has been known to fail in a lot of boilers. So if the boiler is over five years old, um, we tend to replace that part because it'll be a Friday evening sometime and that part will just stop and you won't get any spark, the boiler will just stop working. Not a very expensive part and it's quite easy for us to replace it when we're doing a service. So we generally advise that if the part hasn't already been replaced, that it should be replaced. I've just put the boiler back together again and tighten in the last screw there on the front. And I'm going to give you a quick little overview of this boiler. Very simple boiler to use. We've got a temperature knob on this side that turns up and down for the uh, radiator temperature. We've got one on this side here, which is for the, with the tap symbol, that's for the hot water. So we can turn that up and down to wherever we want. And um, won't go above 60 degrees for safety reasons. This side we have three options. So we have radiator and hot water, which will do both heating and hot water. We have hot water on its own, and then we have the off um, symbol. So we normally leave it in radiator and hot water mode. That means if anybody turns on a tap, the boiler is just gonna start up and heat the water. It won't do the radiators unless we actually turn on the timer to tell it to do the radiators. So we can quite happily leave it in that mode all the time so there we go so that's the radiator symbol and that's the one that controls the radiator they have a little e there for economy they like you to keep it in the economy mode this is the hot water one so if you do have young kids and you you don't want the water to, to be too hot you can turn that way down like that and we do leave this one here in the actual position for hot water and radiators but you have the option of turning it off if you want there is the reset uh, knob here as well. So if the boiler does run out of gas or the water pressure is too low, 
it will come up with an error on the little digital screen. Just above here, we have a list of the errors. Most of the time it's going to be F1 for low water pressure, or it'll be F2 for flame loss. Flame loss normally means that the boiler has run out of gas. Simply the cylinder has just come to an end that is empty. So you need to replace the cylinder um, or have it replaced by a competent person. And then you're ready to go again. Before you turn the boiler on, I'd suggest that you actually start your cooker. Um, um, the rings on the cooker should be used to uh, get the air out of the gas. So you, you keep your finger on the sparker until you get full flame on all the rings of the cooker. Then you can turn off the cooker and then you can come and start your boiler. In order to start the boiler, you're gonna to have to reset it because the boiler will have picked up a problem where there was no gas, so it has gone into lockout um, conditions. So you will have to reset it. And that's very easy. All you do is twist this to the reset and you hold it for four seconds. Release it and the boiler will then try and start again. And you might have to do that a couple of times. Carbon monoxide sensor should be fitted to all houses, caravans, boats, mobile homes, anywhere where you're burning a fuel, there's a potential for carbon monoxide to be generated. Simple alarm like this lasts about seven to 10 years and can certainly save your life. We also sell smoke alarms.